everyone back here with another video and today we're going to be building a budget 18 core hackintosh on the hpz 440 platform so these machines can be had secondhand for about 150 to 250 so these make awesome contenders for budget hackintosh so let's go ahead and go here and let me change the camera angle for you all right so we're in the hp z440 machine now, you do have to be careful when buying one of these. Um, they come with 700 watt power supplies and 500 watt power supplies. So just be careful when you're buying one of these machines to make sure you get the higher power supply wattage option. So these are LGA 2011-3 machines featuring eight RAM slots, single socket, your typical um, LGA 2011-3 configuration for machines similar to this. We've got an AMD Fire Pro graphics card, which obviously we're not gonna be using. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six PCI, well, five PCI Express slots and then one PCI slot, so that's pretty good. We've got, um, let's see here, if we go to the back, we've got four USB 3s, two USB 2s, PS2 for keyboard and mouse, single gigabit Ethernet, and then audio input and output. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the machine. Uh, like I said, these machines can be found anywhere from $150 to $250. Every time I see one of these machines go for below $200, I try to pick up as many as I can. This is actually my fifth one so far, so great machines. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started on talking about what we're gonna be putting into this machine to replace the stock stuff. So in here right now, we've got an E5-1620 version three which is, I believe, a four-core, four-thread CPU. I don't know the clock speed, but I'll put it up here somewhere so you guys can take a look at it. But, um, yeah, obviously, we're not going to be keeping that. So let's go ahead and start with the upgrade. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the processor and memory upgrade. So for memory, we're going to be using 64 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC, 2133 megahertz, as you guys can see right there. We're going to be using two... Dims. Uh, we're not going to be doing anything crazy like 128 for right now. This is just supposed to be a relatively budget build, so honestly, one of these sticks would do. I believe I got each one of these sticks for I think $60, so $120 for 64 gigs really isn't that bad. Moving on to the processor, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it for you guys here. All right, so here is the processor. It's very hard to see. But this is an E5-2696 version 3, which is 18 cores and 36 threads. This processor can be had on eBay for around $150 to $175. Uh, really, really awesome CPUs. Uh, clock speed is 2.3 gigahertz. So not the fastest, but um, when you've got 18 cores, it definitely puts in work. As you guys can see, this is a very wide processor. It's got a very wide heat spreader. It's pretty cool. I've never actually owned a processor this big so yeah this is going to be what we're using for the the brand of the hackintosh obviously the processor so that's the memory and processor side of things so now that we talked about the processor and memory let's go ahead and talk about storage and graphics so for storage i'm going to go ahead and reach over here and grab our storage so we're going to be using a 500 gigabyte sandisk ultra ssd 500 gigabyte this is just temporary for right now. I am going to be installing this NVMe SSD in there slightly after, but this is really just for the demonstration of installing Mac OS. We're going to be installing Mac OS Monterey. So yeah, we're going to be installing Mac OS Monterey, and just for the video purposes, we're going to be using this, but I do fully intend on using this full time as I've got a working installation already on this drive. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get started upgrading this thing. We can go ahead and walk you through the installation process. Now we'll go ahead and put a disclaimer out there. This is not a tutorial video on how to hack and toss these things. I will have an EFI configuration sample in the description below so you can download it and make adjustments if you need to based on your hardware configurations. Um, if you copy and paste the EFI file, it will not work. It's missing crucial information to the uh, opening core boot process. So if you try to just copy and paste the EFI, it's not gonna work. You're gonna have to add in uh, neural information. You're going to have to read the open core guide and figure it out. Obviously, it has all the core components there, so you're not gonna have to do any major work to get this up and running. I've already included boot flags 
um, the configuration .plist and the kex folder in that sample configuration. So all you're really gonna have to do is probably just enter SMBIOS information and then you should be able to get the same thing running. But like I said, uh, if you copy and paste the sample EFI folder, it's not gonna boot. You're gonna have to add your own information in there. You're gonna have to go into the EFI and then the plist configuration and basically just peruse it and see what you need to add. So that, rambling aside, just thought I'd give you guys that heads up. If you guys need help, um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be plenty of people in the comments section that will be willing to help you out. So let's go ahead and get started on upgrading this thing. So let's go ahead and start with the graphics card. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and start with the processor first. All right. So here we are inside the HP Z440. Let's go ahead and start by removing this heat sink. So what we're, we're going to go ahead and do is pop this fan header out right here. And I'm going to grab a long flathead screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and, and star pattern and remove this old processor. So let's go ahead here. All right. All right, here's the heat sink. Let's go ahead and move that off to the side. We are gonna have to clean that up and here is our processor. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And I am very sorry about the crappy lighting, guys. I don't really have a whole lot I'm working with here, so. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and use this to unlock. It's very hard to see, but that's the unlock clip. All right, so here's a little bit better angle with some flash. So as you guys can see here, let's turn this out a little bit. This was the unlock tab, and this is the locking tab. And we've got our arrow right here. So when we go to put new processor back in this is what we're gonna have to line the arrow up with as you can see right there so yeah as you guys like i just said unlock first then you want to pop this guy out and then should just slide back and let's yank this guy out of here be careful not to drop this back in the socket and bend pins because i've definitely done that before so old cpu out all right so here's the new processor E5 2696 version 3, 2.3 gigahertz should be a very nice processor running in Mac OS. Plenty of cores, plenty of threads to do pretty much whatever you want. So if you want to edit videos for running virtual machines while doing whatever, this could do it. So, and I believe this is one of the higher core count CPUs for this platform. You can go with version four CPUs that go up to 20 cores, I believe, 20 or 22 cores, but uh, this should be a perfect budget option as the CPU is only like $150. So let's go ahead and line up our notches here. So here's our notch right there. So my fat fingers cover it up. There's our notch. Let's go ahead and line it up with the notch. As you can see, we've got a paint notch and then as well as a socket notch on the actual motherboard itself. So let's go ahead and install. All right, we're going to drop it in there just like that. And we should be good to go ahead and give it a little shake just like that and give it a little shake make sure you're good to go all right now i'm gonna go ahead and close this up and then we're gonna go the opposite way we're gonna lock first so we're gonna go ahead and put this down and then we're gonna put this one down next and that should be it for the processor now we can move on to the memory and for the Z440, the black slots, furthest from the processor, are going to be the first two slots I'm going to be using. Uh, you're going to want to populate the black slots first. So let's go ahead and grab our memory here. We're going to line up the pins with the pins in the slot. All right, there we go. All right, so we've got a little bit better of an angle and a little bit more light here. We're gonna go ahead and apply thermal paste and reapply the heat sink. So let's go ahead and grab our thermal paste here and apply it. We're gonna do it in X pattern. 
So here's the thermal paste. Just got some standard thermal take TG7 here. And like I said, we're gonna do the X pad. All right, that should be good enough. Please don't absolutely roast my thermal paste applying. Um, like I said, this should be just fine. So let's go ahead. Actually, let's add just a little bit more. And that should be just fine. So let's go ahead and clean off the heat sink and reapply it. All right, so here we got the thermal paste installed. Got the cleaned off surface of the heat sink here. So we're gonna go ahead and reapply or reinstall the heat sink rather. Uh, make sure we get everything all good to go there. And go ahead and line this back up with the holes. All right. There we go. Reinstall the fan header for the CPU fan. And let's go ahead and screw it back down, kind of in the same pattern that we did before. All right, that's on there, not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and move on to the storage and the graphics card. All right, so it's really simple here. We've got kind of a toolless installation for PCI Express cards. We're gonna go ahead and pop these two green latches on the outside of the machine. Fix that. There's two green latches right here that control this mechanism. And we're gonna go ahead and lift up on this green latch right here and pop out this old Fire Pro graphics card. All right, there you go. It's W2100, not really useful to us. So let's go ahead and open up our graphics card. I don't even think I talked about the graphics card. So the graphics card we're gonna be using is the RX 570 8 gigabyte. And this is a card I've had for a while. And these cards are coming down in price pretty significantly, so yeah, this is what we're going to be using here. You can easily put like a RX 580 or even maybe a Vega 64 in here with the right power supply adapters. But we're not doing any of that. We're just going to try to do a budget build. So an RX 578 gig should be budget enough. Now you should be able to get an RX 578 gig in today's market with prices starting to come down around 200 ish dollars. So I think that's what I paid for mine. So it's, I mean, it's an okay deal. It's not great. To be honest, they should only be around, you know, a hundred dollars, but I digress, that's not really, you know, my opinion doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and get started with pulling these PCI cables out. Now with the 700 model, I'm not sure about the 500 watt model, but the 700 watt model comes with two PCI six pin cables. We're gonna be needing one eight pin, so we're gonna be using an adapter with this. And here is our adapter piece right here. Dual six pin to eight pin. here all right and now for our graphics card here is our RX 570 8 gigabyte four ports we've got one display port one HDMI and two DVIs all right and we're gonna be using the top slot here All right, there we go. Graphics card is all in place. Let's go ahead and put our eight pin power connector in. All right, snap our lock back into place and we're good to go. So as terms of storage, we're gonna be using two drives. One 500 gigabyte uh, regular SanDisk Ultra six gigabit SATA SSD. So we're just gonna be placing that in here kinda However, because it's an SSD, it doesn't weigh anything, and we don't need to mount it. So, let's go ahead and insert this correctly, and figure it out. There we go. All right, and then we've got one connector, so I guess we'll only use one drive for this, but you can easily put in, like, a one terabyte hard drive. Um, I think I said we're going to be using two drives, but we're only going to be using one. So, all right, that's all installed here, 
and uh, we should be good to go. Um, I'm not, like I said, we're not going to be using this just yet because uh, this has my current installation of Mac OS. All right, so before we get started with the installation process, I do want to let you guys know that if you have the side panel with Z440, it's going to need a Torx T15 bit to get this piece off down here because this is going to stop the side panel from closing if you have a aftermarket graphics card in here. So I'm going to use a Torx T15 bit to remove this piece so we can close the side panel. All right, so here we are, everyone. We've got keyboard, monitor, power, and mouse hooked up. We've got our USB installer hooked up. And I'm gonna go ahead and reiterate um, that this really isn't a tutorial. Uh, this system is very, very easy to get up and running. So all you really have to do is just use my EFI folder for reference, follow the open core guide, and you should be good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do for the install process is we're gonna go ahead and power it on. We're gonna go right into the BIOS because we're gonna need to change a couple things. So for the Z440, I'm going to hit escape to get into the BIOS. Yep, you might get a few post errors. It's okay. Uh, this one's from memory configuration, but it's fine. So I'm going to go right into the BIOS setup. And we're going to make sure under boot options, fast boot is disabled gonna remove the post delay but that's not really necessary so post delay we're gonna remove that legacy I'm gonna go ahead and disable that again not necessary but just something I want to do all right so we got all that squared away now this is where it really gets um, uh, important so we're really gonna want to put it to a AHCI mode. We're going to want to make sure all our ports are enabled or else it will not see your hard drive if you're using a SATA based hard drive or solid state drive. And you can go ahead and put eSATA on AHCI mode as well and just go ahead and enable these. Although it doesn't really matter, we're just going to do it just for troubleshooting safety. So go ahead and enable that. But like I said guys, just make sure your SATA controller is on AHC AHCI mode and make sure they're all enabled or else you're not going to be able to find your SSD in the uh, Mac OS setup. So let's go ahead and go here. Make sure everything's good here. All right, so now I'm also going to turn my fans up just a little bit because we've got an 18 core in here now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on PCI performance mode even though it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go to performance, no, it's power options. Yeah, fan auto mode, I'm just gonna go turn it up to three. And I'm gonna exit and save changes. And now we should be good to go into our USB and into the installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it reboot. And like I said, guys, you should go right into the installer. Yeah, I get this post error because it's saying I have a fan missing on the uh, memory but it is what it is all right so now we're into the usb and we see our install mac os monitor so we're going to go ahead and hit enter and we should go right into the installer now if you guys have boot hangs you guys should follow the open core guide on how to troubleshoot i will say um if you guys are using my reference efi folder you guys should pay attention to the boot flags um, especially if they have a similar configuration to me, uh, just make sure you're uh, paying attention to boot flags and uh, make sure you're using the appropriate ones, especially if you own a 5700 XT or any newer AMD graphics card, just make sure you really pay attention to that. As well as your kernel extensions, make sure the load order is properly set. Uh, make sure you guys have all of the whatever green and Lilu stuff in the proper order so it loads properly for your graphics card and Make sure you have a supportive graphics card. Those are just some advice that I can give. So, all right, so we're back into the installer now. And it shouldn't matter um, what port you have any USB drives into. I have mine in the front, but I have all my USB ports injected with USB injectile kernel extension. 
so we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and head into this utility. And as you can see, this is our 512 gigabyte SSD here. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. I'm gonna use APFS here. I'm just gonna call it SSD. APFS is UID, standard stuff. And it's gonna finish fairly quickly here. And just gonna go ahead and confirm with the view and show all devices that everything's properly set up. All right, so now let's go ahead and install macOS Monterey. It might take a second to get past this point. Okay, so here we go. And those of you using NVMe drives, um, if you guys take a look at the, I know I'm probably gonna sound like a broken record about the uh, the reference EFI folder, but make sure you guys pay attention to the EFI drivers for NVMe disks on um, high-end desktop platforms. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit agree. And obviously you're gonna install to the SSD, continue, and that's gonna run. And I will come back to you when the first part is finished. All right, so the machine rebooted. So this is what I was talking about with post errors. It'll say the CMOS checksum is invalid. You can fix this with an open core, but I just haven't done it yet. So uh, if you guys want to look into that, that's probably fine, but we'll go ahead and press enter and boot back into our USB drive. Oh, we should have an installation. So let's see. Let's see what we booted into here. Okay, so yeah, we got a post error because of my memory configuration, but it is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna go back into the Mac OS installer. As you can see, there's a new option there, so that's the one you're gonna to wanna to click on. And this is going to restart a few times, so just make sure you're paying attention to it. Um, and you're going to have to manually um, press enter when it errors, so just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, this is going to install, and I will come back when it gets closer to finishing up. Alright, so I've just rebooted again, so we're going back into the macOS installer. All right, here we go. We have the setup screen. We can go ahead and hit United States here. And you guys can go ahead and set this up just like how you would a normal Mac. And when I come back, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get some benchmarks going for you guys here in just a minute. So yeah, that's pretty much the installation in a nutshell. Um, it should take approximately, I don't know, depending on the speed of your drive, it's gonna vary, but mine took like maybe 45 minutes. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely very simple install. And yeah, let's go ahead and get some benchmarks here.